Hey there, lovely souls. Welcome back to my new video, your trusted companion on the journey of self-discovery and personal growth. Today, we're diving into a topic that's both liberating and transformative. Discover the power of self-forgiveness, letting go of toxicity. Forgiving someone for toxic behavior isn't easy, especially when that someone is you. We're often a lot harder on ourselves than we are on others, and this makes it hard to forgive ourselves for past wrongs. Thankfully, self-forgiveness is a skill that can be practiced and improved. I've put together a psychology-backed guide to forgiving yourself for being toxic, making amends, and moving on with your life. Keep watch on to begin your journey toward self-forgiveness. We all carry our fair share of regrets, guilt, and mistakes. But what if I told you that embracing self-forgiveness can be the key to releasing the toxicity that weighs us down? In this video, we're going to explore the profound impact of self-forgiveness on our mental and emotional well-being, and we'll provide you with friendly guidance on how to get going on this liberating journey. Are you ready to unlock the incredible power of self-forgiveness and create a brighter, more compassionate future for yourself? Well, let's get started. Acknowledge and accept what happened. Recognizing what you've done is the first step to self-forgiveness. Be very specific about what you want to forgive and admit that you did something wrong. Blaming someone else for your actions prevents self-forgiveness. If you have multiple incidents or a long history of toxic behavior, pick one behavior, like gaslighting, or one incident, the time I spread a rumor about Greg, to start with. It's not fun to ruminate on instances of your toxic behavior. If you're overwhelmed, remember that you're human and your circumstances at the time caused you to lash out. It can feel embarrassing or vulnerable to admit to mistakes, but remember that they're part of learning and growing. Give yourself time to process everything. Guilt is an important human emotion, just like happiness or anger. Feeling guilty means you're able to be empathetic and understand how your behavior impacts others. Accept your guilt without judging yourself for it. When you let it flow naturally, it will likely pass in a few hours or days. It's important to feel your guilt in order to let it go. If you try to avoid or suppress it, it will only linger and fester longer. Try not to dwell on your guilt. An endless loop of negative emotions like guilt is linked to decreased emotional health and psychological well-being. Separate what you did from who you are. What happened is not an accurate reflection of your character. When you mess up, negative self-talk can internalize your mistake and make you feel like you're a bad person for it. Remember that isn't true. Look at your behaviors as separate from your identity and focus on how to behave differently rather than judging yourself. Release your negative emotions. Getting rid of negative feelings makes forgiveness possible. Negative emotions like guilt or anger and limiting beliefs, I'm a horrible person, are registered in your nervous system. You're wired to keep beating yourself up about what happened. Identify the exact feelings and thoughts holding you back and let them go. Try things like expressing the pain or guilt you feel about what you did by journaling or venting to a friend, writing a spew letter, a letter to yourself detailing all of your negative thoughts about your toxic behavior. Read it out loud to yourself, sit with it for a while, and then throw it out, moving or exercising your body in a way that feels good to clear your mind. Try yoga, dancing, cardio, or anything that brings you joy. Make a conscious decision to let the past go. It's easier to move forward when you let go of experiences holding you back. You can't change what you did. You can only retain what you learned and move on. Remember that you can only do what you think is right in the moment, and that if you knew how much damage you'd cause or guilt you'd feel, you wouldn't have done it. It's empowering to know you have the choice to feel pain forever or move on from it for good. Focus on living in the moment. When bad memories creep in, tell yourself, it's okay that that happened, but now I'm focusing on my happiness. You may need to make this decision more than once if your guilt creeps back in. Keep choosing to move forward and treat yourself with kindness. Ask for forgiveness. A sincere apology confronts the situation directly. Many times, asking for forgiveness leads to resolution for both you and the person you've hurt. It's uncomfortable to fess up to your actions, but your willingness to come forward and make amends will help you forgive yourself for whatever happened. Explain yourself and your actions without getting defensive and tell the person you're genuinely sorry. End by asking them to forgive you. Give the other person a chance to respond and communicate their feelings without interrupting or trying to correct them. 
Remember, the other person does not have to accept your apology. You can't control how they feel or react to you, but you can feel proud that you did the right thing and apologized. Try to make things right. If there's anything you can do to make up for what you've done, do it. Atonement, a reparation for an offense or injury, helps you forgive yourself and shows the people you've hurt that you're genuinely sorry. This is infinitely better than isolating and punishing yourself. That doesn't help you or anybody else. Put your regret into action and do things to minimize or erase the damage you've done to your relationships or reputation. For example, if you spread rumors about someone, you might atone by reaching out to the people you gossip to and telling them you weren't being honest. If you can't do something to help the person you hurt, try doing something for someone else in need. Helping others in any way helps you find peace and repair your self-esteem. Show yourself compassion. If someone else were in your position, would you forgive them? Most likely. People tend to be harder on themselves than they are on others. Treat yourself the same way you would treat someone you care about, including forgiving yourself. And remind yourself you're doing the best you can. Practice self-compassion by journaling about your feelings, mistakes, and challenges. Practicing self-care and doing things that make you feel happy and rejuvenated. Giving yourself positive self-talk when you're feeling negative emotions. Reflect on what you've learned. Your mistakes tell you what to do and not to do in the future. If you regret your toxic behavior, try to use your experience to gain wisdom and awareness to avoid acting similarly in the future. Instead of avoiding your mistakes and living in shame, try these strategies to make the most of them. Practice mindfulness to feel and process your emotions in real time. Having self-awareness can guide you toward productive behavior and reactions. Ask yourself, what would I do differently? What advice would I give someone in this situation? What habits should I explore to act differently next time? Recognize that some things are in your power to change and some are not. Make the decision to change. Deciding you want to be a better person is the first step to becoming one. Oftentimes, change can feel really overwhelming and the toughest decision that anyone ever makes is the decision to invest and commit to themselves. It takes a lot to make that kind of commitment because it means you have to recognize that there are some things about you that need to change in order to be the best version of yourself. Perform a self-inventory to assess what needs to change. Challenge the narratives, perspectives, and thoughts of yourself and your life that you've been harboring. Practice dream liberation. Ask yourself, what would liberate me from feeling stagnant and what does that dream look like for me in the future? Implement positive changes in your life. Wanting to change is just an idea until you put it into action. If you forgive yourself but never make adjustments to prevent your toxic behavior from surfacing again, you won't feel satisfied. By changing your behavior, you're showing yourself and others that you feel genuine regret and want to be better. List specific ways to make your wants a reality, like reciting positive affirmations every day, practicing new anger management techniques, or exploring new stress coping mechanisms. Check in with the people you value the most to make sure you're showing up for them as the best version of yourself. You'll have good days and bad days as you work on yourself. Instead of shaming yourself when you mess up, acknowledge where you fell short and set an intention to keep changing. Talk to a therapist if you're struggling. A mental health professional can help you forgive yourself and move on. If your feelings of guilt and shame over your behavior are overwhelming and you can't make yourself feel better with your current support systems, like friends, family, or self-care, a therapist or counselor can offer guidance. It reflects well on you to admit you need help than to pretend you've got it all together. Consider a therapist when your feelings interfere with your work or relationships. Your mental health affects your physical health. You turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms like overeating or substance abuse. Before we wrap up, let me leave you with some valuable tips to guide you on your journey of self-forgiveness and letting go of toxicity. If you need immediate relief from guilt or shame, give yourself a boost with physical self-care. A shower or bath when you feel guilty is linked to alleviating negative feelings short-term, and spending time on yourself gives you space to gain perspective on your situation. Think about the other person or people's perspective. It's easy to imagine they're just as fixated on your toxic behavior as you are, but this isn't always the case. Remind yourself that the other person might not be affected as severely as you. Remember, guilt is not the same as shame. Guilt lets you know you've done something wrong and helps you atone for it. Shame makes you feel bad about who you are. Keep your guilt to help you make amends, but ditch the shame. Remember, self-forgiveness is a powerful tool for personal growth and healing. 
approach it with patience, and allow it to be a transformative force in your life. As we draw the curtains on this exploration of self-forgiveness and releasing toxicity, I want to leave you with one resounding message. You have the incredible power to transform your life through the gift of self-forgiveness. If this video has resonated with you and you believe it can make a positive impact on others, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and loved ones. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more uplifting conversations on self-improvement and emotional well-being. As you take part on your journey of self-forgiveness, remember that it's not about erasing the past, but rather embracing a brighter, more compassionate future. Be kind to yourself, let go of toxicity, and allow self-forgiveness to be your guiding light. Thank you for being part of our incredible community. Take care, stay true to your path of self-discovery, and always remember that you have the power to create a life filled with peace and self-compassion. Until next time, my friends, stay kind, stay forgiving, and stay remarkable.